Number 55, figure 22.57 shows a long straight wire near a rectangular current loop. What is the direction and magnitude of the total force on the loop? All right, so we have a current here, 15 amps, and then we have a loop here also uh, carrying a particular current, all right? Now, anytime they ask you, it says, what is the force on the loop? You have to add something in terms of uh, some other words to this to help you frame the problem appropriately. It should say, not that it should say, but you should interpret this as, uh, what is the direction and magnitude of the total force on the loop produced by the other current? Okay? Or, in other words, produced by the magnetic field of the other current. Okay? So, if I want to find the force on the loop, I'll call it L, force sub L, then I know that force on the loop is being produced by that other straight wire, okay? Because this cannot, this doesn't produce a force on itself. There has to be some external thing producing a force on it. Hopefully that makes sense from way back when. Um, so now, uh, what I realize, in order to find the force on the loop by or being produced by the straight wire, I'm basically using the formula over here on the right-hand side. I need to know the current traveling in that loop, right? And basically, we're going to look at it as several segments of the loop, but I'm just putting this all together. Multiplied by the length of the loop, okay? Multiplied then by the magnetic field acting on the loop. Now, the magnetic field that is acting on this loop is being produced by the current in the wire on the top. Remember, currents produce their own magnetic fields. Okay, so this current produces a magnetic field according to right-hand rule number two in terms of its direction. So what I realized before I get into that is that, yes, this is the magnetic field acting on the loop. However, that is the magnetic field being produced by the straight wire. Okay, so I'm just going to do a little substitution almost already there. Multiplied then by the sign of the angle between the magnetic field being produced by the straight wire and the current in the loop. Now here's the thing. The loop has four parts to it. So I want you to look at it as four pieces. One piece here, one piece here, one piece here, and last but not least, I'm going to highlight this in yellow again. Okay, one piece there. All right. So... What we're going to do is, first thing is, I have to figure out what is the external magnetic field like around this loop. And that external magnetic field around the loop is being produced by the current in the straight wire. Now, if the current is traveling to the right, okay, according to right-hand rule number two, when your thumb, and check out, by the way, some of the other figures, right, check out number 50, I think I went through that, put your thumb pointing to the right, and then your fingers will, will curl in the direction of the magnetic field. So your fingers should kind of be curling around the wire like this, almost, right? Your fingers should be coming then out of the page on top, and then it should be going into the page on the bottom. If you're doing that right, that's how it should look. So you can put now uh, little dots all above the wire, Okay, to represent the magnetic field. Then below the wire, you're going to put little X's. Okay, all over the place. X, 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 X. Because this now represents the magnetic field below the wire here, below the current that is producing it. All right? Now what we have to do is now that I know the direction now of the magnetic field, I can now begin to talk then about the direction of the forces acting on the loop. Now, the reason why I have four segments here is because there's really four things we have to analyze. Why don't we take a look at the yellow side first? So, in the yellow part here, where's the direction of the current now in the loop? Well, the current here is pointing downwards, right? Because that's what they told us. If you see, right, the arrows, it's going counterclockwise. So now, we have to use right-hand rule number one here. Right-hand rule number one in order to answer this question, right? Anytime you're talking about a current or moving charge, an external magnetic field, and you want to find the force, you got to use right-hand rule number one, okay? Right-hand rule number two just tells you the direction of the magnetic field around a current, right? 
So what I realize now is that my thumb should be pointing now downward. Okay. With your thumb pointing downward, your fingers now, your four fingers, please review number one of the chapter for this, if this is confusing. Your fingers then have to be pointing into the page now, because that's where the external magnetic field is pointing. So with your thumb down and your fingers pointing into the page, your palm now should be pointing to the right. Okay? So that will represent the force factor there. Let's go now to the other side. Now notice the current here, since it's a loop, it will now be traveling upwards. So if the current is traveling upwards, point your thumb up. With your thumb pointing up, keep your fingers now pointing into the computer screen or away from you. It looks like you're shaking somebody's hand. If that is the case, you're doing it right. And then your palm should be now pointing to the left. Now, I don't necessarily have to, hopefully not, uh, but you know, if you notice the, the, the distance, I shouldn't put X's now. These forces will cancel. Why that is, it's a little hard to explain, but if you imagine the magnetic field produced at this particular point is identical to the magnetic field produced at that particular point by the a wire on the top. The magnetic field then down here is less than the magnetic field at this point, okay, being produced by that wire, but it is identical to and the same as this point on that side, all right, which is this is also less than that as well. So the magnetic field is actually changing the whole time, but the external field is changing. It's getting smaller and smaller and smaller the further and further away you move uh, from the um, wire up there. And that's right just according to that formula. If you look right at the R, the distance there is in the denominator. The bigger the R gets, the lower the B gets. So even though the, even though the magnetic field is constantly uh, changing, the external magnetic field is constantly changing, they're constantly changing in an identical way. And what that means is that these forces are changing in an identical way. And since they're pointing opposite of one another, they will just cancel. So what that tells me is that I actually don't really give a darn about any of this part, okay? Any of those forces there, because they're just gonna cancel. So I'll leave it like that. Now let's take a look at the top piece, okay? So the top part has now a current pointing to the left, so right, using right hand rule number one, point your thumb to the left. Your fingers must now be pointing into the page because that's the direction of the external field. It should almost look like right now that you're asking someone to kind of kiss your hand. If you're doing that, then you're doing it right. Now the force here acting on that part of the loop is now pointing down, okay? It's now pointing down. So that's the force, okay? Then let's talk about now the current on the bottom part. So that's the last piece. So the current now is pointing to the right. Okay, so with your thumb now pointing to the right using right hand rule number one and your fingers pointing into the page, it should almost look like you're asking for money. If it looks like you're asking for money with your palm up, you're doing it right. And the force then is pointing now upwards. Okay, so what I'll do is let me just actually try to make these an appropriate size. Okay, just for illustrative purposes. So I want to make this about the same size as that one on the left. That looks good. And now what I'm gonna show here is I'm going to show this one larger, okay, than this one that I'm gonna draw. And the reason being is because they are not equal now. These two, you might be saying, well, they're pointing in opposite directions. Well, sure, but just because two forces are pointing in opposite directions doesn't mean that they'll cancel. They gotta be the same magnitude. And these are not the same magnitude. And the reason why is because the magnetic field, the external magnetic field being produced by this wire on the green segment is larger than the magnetic field being produced on the blue segment. And that's what we're gonna calculate now, okay? I'm sure you're thoroughly confused, um, as I was when I first approached this topic. But you know, keep watching the video, keep thinking about what I'm saying. I'm trying to be very careful in the wording. Um, so hopefully that's going to make sense. So now what I want to do here is I want to now, I'm going to calculate the force acting on the green length, okay, specifically. So the force acting on the green length produced by the straight wire is going to be equal to the current flowing through the green part times the length of the green part times the magnetic field strength of the um, straight wire multiplied now by the sine of the angle between that external magnetic field being produced by the straight wire and the current acting on the green wire. So let's just take care of that first. If you notice here, we were it was always a 90 degree angle, right? This 
current here is pointing to the left, magnetic field is pointing into the page, those are, those are 90 degrees. So sine of 90 is one. So that just cancels. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna plug in the values. Well, actually, let me do one more substitution, okay? So now we have the current um, uh, moving in the green wire. They told it to us. That was I2, right? It's going to be 30 amps. It's 30 amps all over the place. So we know that. The length of the green part, we also know that. They told you that the width of this thing is going to be 30 centimeters, so we know that. But the external strength or the magnetic field produced by the straight wire, we don't know. Right? They didn't tell us. But they gave us some information. They told us a current, they told us a, a distance. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna substitute this formula on in because this formula over here, as we have seen in the past four or five problems now, that this formula talks about the strength of a magnetic field produced by a current, okay? So the basically what I'm saying is that the strength of the magnetic field produced by the straight wire should be equal to the permeability of free space multiplied by the current in the straight wire divided by then two pi times the distance from the straight wire. Okay, so I'm literally just going to substitute this on in now for my magnetic field strength, okay? Now, you can, instead of calling this R, you can call that D. It doesn't really matter. But this is the distance from the straight wire, okay, that is producing that magnetic field. So I'm going to do some simplifications. Uh, the permeability of free space is going to be 4 pi times 10 to the minus 7th current in the straight wire divided by now 2 pi times the distance, okay, between those two, meaning the distance between that current and the distance, uh, well, the distance between that current and the green part because that is the distance that we're trying to calculate the strength of the magnetic field, right, the magnetic field there. So, Okay, um, what we realize is we can simplify this a little bit, right? The pi's go by by, the two cancels, that becomes a two. And you would see from the prior problem that the formula that I used to shortcut the other one is gonna be identical to what I'm writing here, basically. So this is gonna be IGLG times IS, okay? All over then, uh, don't forget the two, because I almost did. And don't forget the times 10 to the minus seventh, because I almost did. 2 times 10 to the minus 7th, okay? Then all over R sub S, the distance. So all we have to now do is do a plug-in. So this is 2 times 10 to the minus 7th. The current in the green wire they told us was going to be 30 amps, so plug in your 30. The current in the, uh, the length, excuse me, of that green segment that is experiencing magnetic field there is going to be 30 centimeters, but you know we then need that in meters, so do your conversion. The current then in the straight wire they told us was 15 amps. And if you watch the prior problem number 54, you'll understand now why I told you not to, not to combine those two currents and just call them squared, okay? Because they can be different. Divided now by the distance between them here, they gave you 7.5 centimeters, but you know we need that in meters, so 0 0.075, all right? And now you're good to go. So now all we gotta do is plug and jug. So two times 10 to the minus seventh times 30 times 0.3 times 15, divided by then 0 0.075, okay? And here we go. So the answer now is the force on the green segment produced by the straight wire is going to be 3.6 times 10 to the minus fourth, okay? Times 10 to the minus fourth. Newtons. All right, now that is not the answer yet. That's just the force on the green segment. So we now have to find the force produced on the blue segment now. If you notice, nothing will change except for the length between those wires. The current is still identical. The length of this thing is still identical, right? The current, the, and the current here is still identical. The only difference now is that the distance has gone up or it, this blue segment is further now. So what we should expect is that the magnetic field strength acting on this blue portion produced by this red current is going to be less. And if that magnetic field is less, the force should be less, okay? I'm not sure how I started it, but what I'm saying is that the magnetic field at this point produced by that red wire is less, and therefore now the force acting on that blue segment is less. So watch, the only alteration I'm going to make here is this number down here at the bottom, okay? It's not that anymore, it's gonna simply be the total distance. So it's going to be 
0 0.075 plus then 0.1, right? Does that make sense? Because this is 10 centimeters and this is 7.5 centimeters. So what's the total? The total is then 17.5, right? So in other words, it's going to now be 0.175. Boom. Okay. And that's that. Now just do your division again. So it's 2 times 10 to the minus 7th times 30 times 0.3 times 15, all divided now by 0.175. And here's the value. This is now the force acting on the blue part by the straight wire is going to be equal to, oh my goodness, look, it's less. 1.54 times 10 to the minus fourth newtons. Now, what is now the total force then acting on the wire? These canceled, so they go, it's zero. There's nothing there. But as you can see now why I drew these different sized, even though they're pointing in opposite direction, doesn't mean that they will cancel. If you were to calculate, and now you might see, if you were to calculate, let's say the magnetic, uh, the force acting on this part, assuming they are exactly in line and the same length relative to the uh, red wire, uh, that they would have been identical, right? And then that means that if you did it also down here, it would have been identical, et cetera, et cetera. So they all would have canceled there for the yellow part. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense now. But in order for me to calculate the total, this is simple now. If you got a force pointing down that's larger than the force pointing up, well, you're going to have a net downward force. And by how much? You just subtract the two, right? That's it. I'm going to subtract the exact values here. So that value minus then that value. So we're going to get now a total force. So you call it F sub net if you want. It doesn't matter. Whatever. Uh, it's going to be 2.06 times 10 to the minus fourth. Is that the right number of sig figs? Don't even ask. I... I'm not even paying attention to it. And uh, because now we're doing subtraction, and this is 3.6, maybe that should have been a zero there. Who the heck knows? And quite honestly, who the heck cares? So here we go, right? Except your professor when he takes off or she takes off, you know, 17 points on the test. So, um, and that's it. That's the net force now, okay? Could you imagine doing all this work? <laughs> and then, you know, Okay, I got the right end. Eh, you got the wrong sig fig, so uh, you get ha you know half of the uh, 25 points that uh, that this is worth. Uh, yeah, right. Okay. So anyway, guys, thanks for tuning in. I hope that helps. Not bad, but there's a lot to consider. All right? I also consider subscribing. That'd be awesome. If this helped you out at all, it'd be an awesome way to, uh, to help us out. Okay? It allows us to keep producing uh, videos for you. So we appreciate it. Thank you so much. I look forward to helping you with the next problem as long as it's not as long. Take care.